Hello and welcome back. If you are on this particular video, it means that you are done with your exercise on the domain model. Now let's look at the solution for that exercise that we started in the previous video. Now when I do this in the classroom session and I give them the same problem, the list that you see on the left hand side of the screen is typically the list that I get. Uh, so the participants would have actually used nouns or the noun phrase approach in identifying the various entities. And in that particular list, I've also color coded the actors that I've shown in green and underlined it. The customer, CSR, garage rep, and a DCR employee are actually actors. And hence, I just color code them and say that, yes, these are nouns, fair enough, but they actually happen to be actors because I tend not to model them or model too many of them into my domain uh, model itself. Uh, having said that, there's one more thing I wanted to point out here. As I mentioned in the use case diagrams, without knowing about the business space or the domain in which you're trying to model this, it's not really prob you know, it's possible for you to identify every single entity from a given one pager, like the way we are trying to do right now. Now, if you notice the problem statement that was given to you in the previous slide, it actually made no mention about a rental agreement, correct? Now, but knowing the domain of how this uh, retail uh, vehicle rental agencies work, I was able to identify the rental agreement entity here. So please do note that it is not possible for you to identify every single entity by just looking at a particular piece of paper using noun phrase approaches. So you do have to have a little bit of an understanding of the domain that you're trying to work in and that will actually go a long way. Now, having uh, done the particular list, the, the diagram on the right side is probably how I would go about depicting the domain model for this ABC car rental agency. And you'll also notice that the customer entity I've actually color coded in green. And the reason I did that was I just, it's a way of telling myself and also it's a way of communicating to everyone that this happens to be a actor. Uh, so it's just a visual cue to tell everybody that it's actually an actor. And the point I made earlier is very much true. Even if I were to remove the customer from here, the domain model still holds true. And that's basically what we are actually trying to achieve. So what the domain model is trying to tell us here is a customer can actually have n number of bookings. A booking belong or booking will have only one type of vehicle for which you do a booking for. And once you have your booking and once you go to that particular place to pick up your vehicle, the person will actually make you sign a rental agreement. Uh, and at that point is when a specific vehicle uh, with a specific number of X, Y, Z, uh, whose nameplate is X, Y, Z, will be assigned to you. Only then you really know what specific vehicle you're getting. And against that rental vehicle, an invoice gets generated and a payment gets made against that particular invoice. So this is what we mean uh, by the domain model. And this is how you actually go about writing one. With that, we come to the end of this particular video where we took a look at what domain model is, what its importance is, and an approach that we could take as to how to go about write a, writing a domain model. In the next video, we're going to take a look at a demo of how to write the domain model using StartUML. I'll see you guys later then.